Good morning, church. Today I want to take you to John chapter 7. There's this passage in John chapter 7 that I think is perfectly appropriate for the stuff that we're dealing with today. Let me share it with you. At the very beginning of John 7, verse 1, it says this, After this, Jesus went around in Galilee. He did not want to go about in Judea because the Jewish leaders there were looking for a way to kill him. But when the Jewish festival of tabernacles was near, Jesus' brothers said to him, Leave Galilee and go to Judea so that your disciples there may see the works you do. No one who wants to become a public figure acts in secret. Since you're doing these things, show yourself to the world. For even his own brothers did not believe in him. Now, this makes perfect sense because if your brother told you that he was God in the flesh, you probably wouldn't believe him either. If my sister told me that uh, she was divine, I wouldn't believe her either. So clearly, this is normal for brothers to not believe. What's interesting, though, is that these brothers later on do believe. James becomes one of the leaders in the Jerusalem church. Jude writes a uh, Uh, a book that we have in our New Testament called the book of Jude. And so this is an amazing thing that the brothers of Jesus would later on believe in him. In fact, this is one of the evidences for the resurrection because how else do you convince your brother that you are God in the flesh unless you die and rise again? But we don't have time to get into all that today. I want to keep going in this story. Verse 6 Jesus tells his brothers, my time is not yet here. For you, any time will do. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify that its works are evil. You go to the festival. I'm not going up to this festival because my time has not yet fully come. After he had said this, he stayed in Galilee. So Jesus is saying, my time to go to Jerusalem and be killed is not now. So I'm going to linger. I'm going to hang back. Verse 10. However, after his brothers had left for the festival, he went also, not publicly, but in secret. Now at the festival, the Jewish leaders were watching for Jesus and asking, where is he? So Jesus does go. There's a reason he wants to be at the festival, but he's going in secret. He's not going to raise too much of a ruckus. In particular, he doesn't want to go in the company of his brothers who don't believe in him and are going to try to push him into becoming some sort of Messiah character. But this is interesting. Verse 12. Among the crowds, there was widespread whispering about him. Some said, he's a good man. Others replied, no, he deceives the people. But no one would say anything publicly about him for fear of the leaders. Not until halfway through the festival did Jesus go up to the temple courts and begin to teach. The Jews there were amazed and asked, how did this man get such learning without having been taught? Now, there are a lot of things that happen in the rest of this chapter. We're not going to be able to look at all of John chapter 7. But the main thing that happens in John chapter 7 is that the people accuse Jesus of getting his teaching from some false place, whether it's from the devil or it's from some other teaching that isn't reliable around there. And and there's this debate going on, but mostly it's Jesus trying to say, my teaching comes from God the Father himself. So Jesus is trying to confirm to them that he is getting his teaching from God. However, the end of the chapter, the end of Jesus' teaching is what I want to focus on today, what I want to consider today. But before we look at that, I need to tell you about the tabernacles. Remember at the beginning of this story, this is all happening during the Feast of the Tabernacles. What are the Feast of the Tabernacles, you might say? Okay, let me tell you. So the Feast of the Tabernacles was a moment that the Jewish people used to commemorate the days when they would wander in the desert all the way back in the book of Numbers. When Moses was leading the people through the wilderness, they would live in tents. They were nomads. They were, you know, moving from place to place. And then God instituted this feast, this festival that they called Tabernacles, that every single year their job was to live in tents so that they could remember what it was like to be nomads, remember what it was like to have nothing of their own, remember what it was like to not have any land. 
That means that once a year, they were supposed to remember a time when they were unstable. Once a year, they were supposed to remember a time when they had no solid ground. Once a year, they were supposed to remember a time when normal was abnormal. Once a year, they were supposed to remember a time when every single day the manna came down from heaven and they hoped it would be there. And every single day they woke up and wondered, is this the day we're gonna get home? Is this the day we're gonna finally enter into the promised land? Is this the day God is gonna keep his promise? See, the Feast of Tabernacles was a time for everybody to remember how needy they were. It was a time for everybody to remember how desperately they needed God. It was a time for them to remember when confusion was normal. And it's in that vein that Jesus says what he says next. Verse 37. On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who's thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up till that time, the Spirit had not been given, since Jesus had not yet been glorified. Now, John is telling us that this is all about the Holy Spirit. But let me just remind you that Jesus says this Holy Spirit this Holy Spirit is a refreshing spirit. Hear his words again. Let anyone who's thirsty come to me and drink. Right now I'm imagining you're in a place where you're a little bit thirsty. You, you want God to show himself. You want God to reveal himself. You want God to come through for you in some way. Right now, you're living in a place of confusion. Right now, it's almost like you are living in a tent. Even if you're at your house, you're still kind of living in a tent because it's all abnormal. Nothing is the way it's supposed to be. Everything is weird. Everything is unsettled. Everything is uncertain. And Jesus smiles at you because once a year, it's good to remember how needy you are. And once a year, it's good to remember how thirsty you are. And once a year, it's good, or maybe once a day, it's good to come to him and drink. Today, if you are thirsty, come to him and drink. Let living water flow through you by the Spirit of God. And if it's flowing through you, Reach out to someone and let it flow from you to them. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would guide us today. We ask that you would move in our hearts. We ask that you would lead us to be people who honor you and follow you and bless others. And I pray that you'd help us today to be thirsty and to find our refreshment in you. Thanks for giving us this time together. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day today.